Hello my friends and welcome back. In this video we are going to take a look at all of the new changes that landed in the latest release of Komorebi, the tiling window manager for Windows. So the latest release is version 0.1.16. It was published on GitHub two days ago and I believe it has made its way into both Scoop and Winget. So we can go through some of these and yeah, we'll try as best as possible to do a before and after comparison. Uh, so bug fixes. I believe this is to do with code generation. Uh, Cydium made a number of suggestions uh, for how to fix the syntax in the code that is is generated for auto hockey so let's um, take a look at the generated file can yeah, make it a bit bigger so the main issue was that we needed to have the single quotes on the outside and for this argument we wanted to keep the or I think as a part of the new language specification for auto hockey, we have to keep these in double quotes, which meant that we had to have these single quotes on the outside. So that is what is uh, mostly covered in this commit. Uh, next up, update border correctly on unstack. This was an interesting one. I I've actually started using stacking more since uh, since this was reported and fixed. So uh, Alex Rumak, he posted some screenshots and what you can see, and I think I'll try and demonstrate this in a second, is that when you stack or unstack a window and if you are using the active window border, the active window border will not redraw. So here I imagine two windows have been stacked one on top of the other, but the outline is still reflecting this layout. And then when unstacking, um, it's, it's still a step behind. It's still thinking that it's an entire window taking up uh, the whole screen. So why don't we jump into our terminal and we can start up. Komorebi background and we can see how this looks in practice while we get some of these others up here as well. Uh, All right, so this is still running um, version 0 0.1.15. So we're going to go ahead, maybe open up another Windows terminal. And I'm going to try and stack these. And you can see here that the border has not been updated, which is not what we want. So why don't we go ahead and scoop update Komorebi to get the latest version. Why don't we just make sure that Komorebi is stopped first. Might take a second because I have not been on the VM for a hot minute. Okay, not bad. So this is basically how you update. If you had followed the quick start video, the walkthrough video, you just come into your terminal and you do scoop update Komorebi. It will search uh, GitHub to see if there is a new version. It has seen that there's this new version 0 0.1.16 and it will do the stuff. So we're gonna run Komorebi again now and it will be running this latest version that we have downloaded And we're going to do the same thing again, right? We are going to stack one window on top of the other. Uh, what am I doing here? 
And there you have it. It is it is updated. We have the, the green window for the stack and it's updated and it looks pretty cool. And also when you unstack you get you get the border updated uh, as as you expected. So that was that was this ticket. That was this ticket. Uh, so that's that was a nice fix. I like that one. Uh, next up, I just went ahead and opened all of these. Um, don't think we looked at this one. All right, so this one was from a first-time contributor, Alvin T. Alvin ninety one, and for some reason, I'm not sure why, but I had added a clap alias, which was the same as the command name. So that meant that anytime anybody wanted to run um, Comrade VC global work area offset, you would just get a crash instead of being able to instead of being able to set a global work area offset. So thank you very much, Alvin T for that very much appreciated. Um, somebody pointed this out to me. I do not remember who, but they pointed it out to me and I'm glad that they did because this was, uh, this was a part of the quick start that was, was fundamentally broken. So thank you, whoever you were and sorry that I cannot remember. Um, I think we're moving now into the features. So, hmm, why should we start? Uh, so add cycle, move, send to monitor commands. This was linked to a ticket by Thomas Rood, I imagine in the Netherlands. Um, and this person said, that they could not find a cycle move to monitor alternative to the move to monitor. So there are a number of uh, cycle commands actually. So if we do come on RPC cycle, all right, we've got cycle move to workspace, cycle send to workspace. We now have cycle move to monitor and send to monitor. And the main characteristic of these commands, if we look at cycle, uh, let's do cycle focus because we can actually do that on the VM. It allows you to take a cycle direction. So if I do previous, it's going to cycle to the previous window. But equally, if I do next and we are at the end of the list of windows, it's also going to wrap around. Uh, and bring us back to the start of the list of windows. So this is really cool. If you don't want to use numbered commands or named commands, and you're not exactly sure which monitor, which workspace, whatever you want to send it to, but you have an idea physically of, okay, this is the previous one, this is the next one, this is the current one, uh, it's, it's a really useful command. So this was implemented. Uh, I think this is actually a really good, uh, example PR for people who would like to contribute a simple command like this. Like if you see that there is a cycle command that is missing, you can come to issue number 363, look at the PR that got merged. And it's, yeah, this is all it is. You touch three files. A lot of the code is already there. And you just do a little bit of copy paste, a little bit of uh, variable name updating. And if you get stuck, you can always ask me or anybody else on the Discord. So that is cycle move to monitor. Mm, I like this one a lot, actually. 
add border color for monocore, I did a video of myself implementing this. So let's have a look at the ticket. Uh, hey, Cory Track said something like this command would be great for being able to see uh, when a video has taken the full screen. And so you can watch the video of me implementing this here. We have not updated our configuration, but we can, let's see. Uh, I did update the sample configuration. So let me grab the line that is in there. Cause I really like the color that we came up with <laughs> on the video. Uh, so we're going to send this command, comma rbc active window border color, window, window style or window kind is monocle. So we'll send that and we're going to put this terminal window into monocle mode. And look at that super nice wave per wave style. Yeah, I love it. It's great. I recommend everybody use this color for, for monocle mode. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was a slightly more involved, uh, change. It's, it actually does not look that big, um, now that I'm looking at the, at the diff in the code. But I mean, if you watch the video, you'll see what it took to get there. So that is the border color for monocle windows. Hmm, the check command. So I've noticed that quite a few users who are having trouble uh, with various things when they come into the Discord, more often than not, it's something that needs to be tweaked in either their shell environment or the location of files on their file system. So I added this command, comma rbc check. Um, and users are encouraged to uh, report the output of this when they're opening issues on GitHub. I'll also ask you for this if you come into the Discord. And yeah, right now it's checking to see if there is a Comoreby config home set. Otherwise, uh, if there's not, you'll default to the home directory and then it's looking for files in that directory. So if the PowerShell file is found, that will be auto loaded. Um, and if the WHKDRC file is found, uh, those will be loaded when um, WHKD is started. So let's take a quick look here. I believe I also did a video for this. I'm not sure. Um, development. Uh, yes, I did. So you can watch me implementing this, um, on, on YouTube. You can check that out. It's currently the last video in the playlist. So that is the check command. I think that will be very useful. And there is the bug report that's updated. Uh, this is the monocle border. That's the check command. And here we have uh, a very cool rule, uh, a very cool new command that introduces the initial workspace rule. And this was a contribution, again, by Arvin T. Man, killing it. I love it. Uh, yeah, so let me see if I can find the pull request for this, actually. Uh, author. Oh. Hmm. Was it two separate? Oh. Clearly, I'm not very good at GitHub. Uh, initial workspace rule, maybe. Huh. I could have sworn that there was an issue related to this. 
and it was like fairly, fairly recent. Ah, here it is. Here it is. All right. So this is the original ticket opened by S. Frankie. And basically the idea is that, you know, sometimes we have windows that we always want to be on a certain workspace, but sometimes we only want the window to go to that workspace when it is first opened and then we want to be free to move it around to different workspaces. So let's see if I have uh, an application installed by default that we can do this with. Um, you know what, maybe we'll do this with Edge, so... Hmm. All right, comma RBC initial workspace rule. And we take the usual stuff, right? Um, let me actually quickly check what is in my configuration on this virtual machine. Uh, okay, so we have named monitors and we can use that. Um, or a PC named initial workspace rule. Or is it initial named workspace rule? There it is. Uh, okay, so let's figure out what we want to use. We want to apply this rule to Edge, I think. So we'll target this executable file, Microsoft Edge dot exe. Uh, exe. All right, so it is an executable. The identifier is this. And uh, I'm going to minimize this for now. And then we want it to go to workspace two. So that is set. So now that did not work the way I wanted it to. All right, let's um, let's add this to our configuration. I think also because it was already opened. Mm. All right, so why don't we set the name to workspace rule first, and then we can see how that works, and then we can come back to use the new version of this rule. All right, so a little bit of jank still, but you can see that as soon as I opened it, it got sent here to the second workspace. Now, if I try and send it back to the first workspace, it tried, but because the rule is set as such, it immediately got sent back <laughs> to the second workspace. And so this is the behavior that um, a couple of users were trying to avoid. What they really wanted was for this to only happen once when the app is initially shown. So we'll do that. Uh, let's just restart here. And so the desired behavior at the end of all of this is that the first time we open Edge, it should go to the second workspace. And then we should be free to move it to any other workspace. So here we go. Okay, so it automatically got moved to the second workspace here. I'm going to try and move it back to the first workspace and yay, we are free to move it. So I can move it back to the second workspace. I can move it back to the first workspace. Hey, that's pretty cool. I like that. Let me just get back quickly over here. 
so that is the the workspace rules. So thank you again, Alvin, for the implementation of that and submitting a PR and responding to the comments that I left on the PR. And this is great. I use this in my own personal configuration now. It makes a, a huge world of difference. The last major thing is the reintroduction of sample files for AutoHotKey version two. So mm, there is a, a huge issue on this, right? And um, Cydium opened this back in December and it's basically the migration from AutoHotKey version one to AutoHotKey version two. I got very frustrated and I ended up creating <laughs> WHKD, but with uh, a little bit of distance and thinking outside of the box and some discussion on the Discord, we, uh, yeah, we, we came up with a way forward, right? So um, this use, user, Lazui, had done a great job of writing uh, an auto hotkey version two version of the Como RBC library by hand. At the time, I thought it was by hand, but it was actually automatically generated. So I thought, you know what? We're already generating valid AHK v1 syntax. We can just use the converter to convert that. Uh, we updated the um, application specific configuration generation command to, and that is this commit. Uh, we updated this to emit auto hotkey version two compliance syntax, and yeah, that was that was pretty much it. Uh, so now, I mean, the the artifact of this is that we have a sample configuration for auto hotkey. We also have the the generated um, rules that are kept in the root of the repository in the auto hotkey format. And yeah, that's it. It's, it's pretty much the, <laughs> the exact same sample configuration. And we're also pushing the auto hotkey version two um, syntax version of the Commodore BC uh, auto hotkey auto hotkey library. Um, so if you're a recent user, you don't need to worry about this too much. Uh, but I know a lot of the earlier users are pretty invested in the auto hotkey ecosystem. So there's this new section here using auto hotkey. Um, it's the same thing, but just, you know, the different files that you need to download to get started. I have, uh, I've asked a few people and they said we would like to see a quick start video using auto hockey. So that will be coming up soon. Uh, so I'll go into that in more detail there where we, you know, we'll bring up Komorebi from scratch and we'll set it up using auto hockey. And the main reason that you may want to use auto hockey is that it natively supports overriding using super low level hooks, the Windows key. So if you would like to use Windows as your modifier key, auto hotkey is your best option for that. Um, otherwise, if you are like me and you use a combination of the alt key and the shift key for everything, you're, you're good to stick with uh, WHKD. Uh, what do we have? So I think that is, that is everything, right? Uh, there's some updates to the documentation, a whole bunch of dependency updates because I like to keep everybody up to date and secure. And that is version 0 0.1.16 in a 24 minute long nutshell. So before I wrap up this video, I do want to bring your attention to the sponsor page for this project. If you are an individual user of this software, you find it valuable, you find it useful, it's finally made Windows a usable experience for you, please consider becoming a sponsor. Even if you commit to a dollar a month, 
it makes a huge difference to me. If you are using the software in the context of your job, if you work at a Windows-based company, if you are using the software, if you know that other engineers or other colleagues are using the software, you know, consider reaching out to somebody in your company, somebody who may be in a position to um, enable the company to sponsor a project. Uh, that would be that'd be a huge help. Um, yeah. That's it. This is the end of the video. Make sure that you subscribe if you would like to see more Komorebi related content. Um, leave a comment letting me know what other kind of uh, feature walkthroughs that you would like. If you're stuck on anything in the configuration, let me know. And whatever you do today, I hope you all have a very, very nice day. Goodbye.